back where I come from, it's probably 85 below with the wind chill right about now. If you're kicking around South Beach or kicking back in your crib, keep it tuned right here. Miami, if you can't make it here, you can't make it anywhere. Six hundred and eighty three. I was in the neighborhood. I just thought I'd check to see if the door was locked. It's unlocked now. What happened in Miami? Um, I burned it down. It did the same for me. I don't know. I mean, another month went by, and then another went. I'm on the early shift. I have to be at the hospital now. I got my old job back at the Journal. I'm back. Really? Yeah, really. Okay, listen up, folks. I want you all to welcome back an old friend, Jack Travers, straight from the Miami Globe. Mr. Miami Underbelly, right? Yeah, there's a story I used to do every once in a while. How you doing? Not anymore. Now it's Mr. Jericho Underbelly. Ain't no such thing. Pot belly, maybe, but no underbelly. Travers. I'll be right there. the garage. My car is ready.
Looks like you folks could use some help. And I could use some gas if you let me siphon some off your truck. Well, a little gas wouldn't hurt, I guess. In trade? My son comes over seven days a week. Weather like this, he makes this mess. It happens to the best of us. You're Sarah Carpenter, aren't you? I'm Jack Travers. I'm in your biology class. Can I walk you home? You want to carry my books, too? You have a tough day? Yeah. Well, I'll get you home, then. Didn't ever think I'd hear you say that again. Me neither. Would you like to come in and get yourself cleaned up? Yeah, and have a hot drink. I could use one. You got a name, son? Daryl. Hey, look what I found out on the street. He's just calling out your name. He's going, Maggie. Maggie. sent me from Baltimore, and that one's from Pittsburgh, and I think those are from Florida, and the others, <laughs> well, I can't remember. Well, I'm not sending you this one, Maggie. I'm here to give it to you. Well, isn't that special? Maggie, you want to help me with the dishes? Let him clean the dishes. He hasn't cleaned dishes in two years. Young lady. You are absolutely right. Jack, you have chores tonight. Yeah, Dad, that's to you, All right. You guys help dry? Sorry, Jack, no can do. Yeah, sorry, Dad. I've got homework. Hmm, I see. <laughs> And while you're at it, you can make your daughter's lunch for school tomorrow. <laughs> Nice having someone else around to help out, huh? Yeah, and do some dishes. <laughs> and do some dishes. I like my sandwich cut in triangles.
Right on time, Jack. Morning. Don't you ever get tired of reading the papers that you're the one who wrote it? I never do. Every morning, he's holding it in my hands like the first time I saw my name in a byline. I remember that day myself. Do you? Yeah, I don't know. Reading at the office ain't the same somehow. Something missing that way. I don't know what it is. Well, you get no argument from me, Jack. Nothing like a paying customer. Hey, I can't let you in there. Bad in there? Never seen anything like it. I'm Richard Shaw. I'm a photographer for BCI, a Bureau of Criminal Investigations. You ever heard of it? I still can't let you in. You must be lost. Hello, yourself. Yeah, I heard you were still on the same beat. What's the matter? Did Washington forget to call? I see you moved on to much better things. So how's it feel? Being back at your first job again. <laughs> well, so far it's been uh, quite a welcome. <laughs> what are you looking at? You, man. You must have fucked up big time to come running back here with your tail between your legs. Well, let's just say I missed your smile. It's all right, Mitchell. <laughs> Mr. Travers here is a member of the press. We won't stand in his way. Sometimes we've got to break the rules. Besides, I want this on the front page. Hmm. Nate's body's in the kitchen. Karen's in the pantry. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Nicole? Thank you. I'll take this, Nicole. Oh, Dr. Peters is tending to the family, and Herb down there is gonna make it. But the grandmother, she's been bedridden ever since they broke the news to her. Lily Carpenter, how's she doing? The doc says if she don't pull out of it, she'll be dead in three days. It's the most brutal thing I've ever seen. They weren't just murdered, they were executed. Hard to figure. What kind of man do such a thing? Well, we'll know soon enough. They found fingerprints all over the place. They're leaving a trail even a cop could follow. Now they're holding up convenience stores like a march to the sea. It's like they want to be caught. In all my years, Jack, I... I mean, I'm sure you've... It's just not the same for you. Well, I'll tell you, Will, you never get used to this kind of thing, and, and once is enough. You want to die? 
Come on, friend. Time to go to work. Sir, I want you to know how sorry we all are about what happened to your family. And uh, people are going to hear your story. I promise you. Sir, is there something that you can tell me about the bastard that did this to you? Anything you can remember? A boy. Just a boy. Yes, sir. I know. You lost your son. Uh, no, the one... He was just a boy. to break the rules sometime. You must really enjoy your work, Doctor. What is that for? Trace the gunshot. You know, entry and exit. What does it tell you? What's it worth to you? Billy, <laughs> just tell me what you see. Just kidding, Jack. Anyway, if you look here, you can see this one was shot at a distance of, say, 10, 15 yards, more or less. Very clean. Should have done this sooner, but I haven't had a lot of time alone with this guy. Why is that? You ain't the first visitor he's had. Police Deputy Mitchell came by, stood over him just like you. Is that right? Well, Doctor, now who is this? Lily Carpenter. You know her? You got a minute? Hey, Mr. Travers. I just said you're back for good, that true? Oh, no. back for good. Back for better or worse. Wasn't self-defense, was it? What you talking about? I'm talking about Fred Granger. Brown murdered Granger, didn't he? That makes him a goddamn killer. You keep your mouth shut, that makes you a killer, too. Mr. Travis, I ain't no killer. Now, I know that you don't want to upset anything there, Mitchell. But you got to decide sometime what kind of man you want to be. I know that you got a beautiful house. You got a beautiful wife and kid. You want to make a stand sometime, don't you? You saw the report. Granger got loose. What it doesn't say is that I panicked and he got a hold of my gun. She saved my ass. 
Otherwise, you'd be in that morgue writing a story about me. You must be tired. No. <laughs> mm, I saved you some supper. I'm not hungry. Huh? No. So how do you like it? I like it. Keep doing it. I mean, do you know? Mm, what do you think? Thank you, Mitchell. That's good. You're a good man. Mr. Travers. Yeah. That stuff I told you about Agent Brown. Uh-huh. Listen, just forget about that, okay? That's yesterday's news. Okay? Thank you. Bye. What is it? Jericho's finest to made the streets safe to walk once again. Oh, how <laughs> Someone on the left here. On the left. Come on! Hold of him. Let's hold do here. it! Yeah. Got him. Got him. I'm ready to die, you two. big feet mother! Too bad, people. Y'all missed your chance. Darrell Weston, you have been found guilty on two counts of murder in the first degree. All right, son? It is the sentence and judgment of the court that you shall suffer death by electrocution. Time and place to be fixed by the order of this court, the state, and the Department of Corrections after the required review of this case by the state Supreme Court. You have the right to appeal. didn't even blank. Nope. Mr. Strong, stop, Jack. Glad you like it. I'm gonna try to meet him. Say what? I'm gonna do a series of interviews with him. We can't turn our back on this. <laughs> you gonna call the governor? How are you gonna get in? Well, you know, Will, he's 19 years old. 19. Do you remember 
When we used to light up a joint, we think that we were the biggest criminals in the entire state. We well, did some pretty wild things. Compared to what? I want to look inside the mind of the most brutal killer this state has ever seen. A lot of people are dead, Jack. Two of the Allendales, Lily Carpenter, now Fred Granger. What makes you think people still want to hear about this thing? If we can put a man on the moon, why can't we figure out who's going to kill and who ain't? You know, the governor is a great idea. Hello? Who? Yeah, I'll tell him. Don't come in. That was Greenwood Penitentiary. You mean the Greenwood Center for Rehabilitational and Behavioral Sciences? When am I getting in? When are you gonna let me in? I don't want you going in that place. It's gonna be fine. I know, I just, I'm worried, you know? Oh, please. Please, baby. Let me go to jail. Let me go to jail. Mm, all right. I hear jail's lovely this time of year. <laughs> mm, I love you, Jack Trapp. Mm -hmm. You know that? Mm -hmm. You do, don't you? Mm -hmm. You just be sure they don't lock you up and throw away the key. <laughs> Jack Travis. Mr. Travis, the dead man in this prison are allowed contact visits. I need you to put your ID and any weapons you may be carrying on the counter, please. Driver's license, credit card, OK? yourself with it. Don't worry about me. I won't. Much further. Two more flights. They uh, they keep them at the very top. Closer to heaven. Trip's over. Why not undo these so I can check the man's hand proper? Check Trevor. Let's skip the formalities. Folks around here say that you are the most evil thing on earth. And uh, I won't hear it from you. Who are you? 
What are you? Pretty juicy stuff. What you gonna do with it? Write a book? Maybe. First, a series of articles for the Jericho Journal. Piece of shit newspaper. Well, that's just a place to write about the likes of you, isn't it? Hmm. Who the fuck are you, man? Walter fucking Cronkite. I'm nobody. But you're planning on being somebody when you're done with me, right? And I'm gonna be a dead man. You killed Nathan Allendale with a shot to the heart. And you shot Herbert Allendale three times, twice in the back. You slit Karen Allendale's throat with a kitchen knife. And she was seven months pregnant. Do you deserve to die, Darrell? I got two rules. First, no tape recording. Well, I... I always use the tape recorder on my story. That's funny. I thought this was my story. And the set rule? Boiled shrimp and garlic butter. That sounds great. What about it? I want you to bring me some every time you come and visit me. Every time. Until then. No shrimp, no interview. This is my show, you dig? You busy, honey? Yep. Listen, I can't seem to find my camera. You wouldn't by any chance know where it was, would you? I don't know. Well, that's not much of an answer. Okay. Thanks. You're not gonna punish me? Oof, it's been so long, it didn't even occur to me. It's not much of an answer. You like taking pictures? I never really found out. Well, I guess you're old enough to find out what your old man does for a living, old enough to try it, too. Go ahead, keep it. Hmm. Why'd you stay in Miami for so long? I write about people, and I had a good job doing that. So are you any good? I'm the best. So that's why you stay? No, no, I stayed because I was a jerk. The best jerk? Something like that, yeah. You look beautiful. Oh, uh, thank you. That smells good. What is it? This is my ticket to greatness in garlic butter. Open sesame. Clear. like home. Read your article. Did you? You wrote every word I said. Every single word. That's my job. You're my mouth, Jack. Like Moses to God. I like that. Punch you step in my office.
My mother used to make shrimp just like this. Charlene Weston, born in uh, Paris, Texas, died in a car crash at the age of 41. She was a prostitute, wasn't she? Do your homework, Travers. She wasn't a prostitute, though. She was a $10 whore. French, Swedish, Greek. She gave face in all the major tongues. <laughs> I used to listen a lot of the time. Sometimes I'd watch, just to get a look at the guys. <laughs> Most of them look like you. Avers, probably married with kids. You married, ain't you, Jack? Yeah. Yeah. Kids? One. Yeah. One time, I took a kitchen knife, tried to stab one of them. I was, what, 10 or 11? That's when my mother first told me I'd end up in the electric chair. So one true thing she ever said to me. Well, how about uh, never be worth a damn? Bet you heard that about a thousand times, didn't you? You found my dad, too? No, no, that was my dad. He always used to say that to me after my mother died. You know? I, I was pretty fucked up as a kid, too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Man, you gotta get me out of here. I didn't do it. I didn't kill no damn buddy. I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I needed money, so I, I was looking for an easy score. The house looked real good. When I got in there, they were already dead. Man, I panicked. I took a few things, some cash and split. That's all. Hmm. I'm no killer, Jack. Well, it's tough being misunderstood, isn't it? You know where you are, fuckface. Do you know who I am? Do you know what I could do to you? You want me to write you some new lines? You want to die, don't you? <laughs> wait, 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 are you going to dance here, or are you going to let me go? <laughs> you can use it if you want to. What I do right? Nothing. Something I missed before. Now I see it. Anyway, I want you to do a favor for me. Dear Daryl, each day when I get home, I run right to the mailbox to see if you've answered my letters. I know it must be difficult to keep yourself clean and away from the bad elements surrounding you in prison, but you must try. If you had any idea how much I love you, you wouldn't go around saying that you want to die. If you knew how much I loved you, you wouldn't be so anxious to ride that bolt of lightning, as you call it. Here's a picture of me. I love you, Becky. Robert Kennedy was the bravest man in the world until Daryl came along. Oh, yeah? You don't mind me quoting you on that, do you? Of course not. You're the most important person I've met in my life. You must not get around too much. Just don't use my real name. I have the best mother and father in the world. They'd pitch a fit if they knew I was in love with Daryl. Yeah. Why are you in love with him? I can't imagine who wouldn't be. He's so intense. And beautiful. He's got perfect teeth. He's also a convicted murderer. You know what girls do when they visit their men in jail? Tell me. Well, since the only place they can meet is in the visiting room, in front of
front of everyone. The girls put a slit into their jeans. And they do it. Right there. And I can't visit him. Because I've got a record, too. You're lucky. You've met Daryl. You've been with him. Seen him up close. You've touched Daryl. Touch me, Jack. I don't think so. No big deal. I thought it would have been fun. Right. Yeah. Thank Daryl for me, will you? Yeah. I've got two words for you. Only two? You promise? I got work to do. Associated Press. You bullshit. They love your art because they're picking them up and putting them on the wire. <laughs> Damn! It's all yours, my friend. Hey, Pete, it's not bad. Not bad. You might just make something of yourself. Congratulations. We're famous. The whole country's reading what I write about you. Cause for celebration, don't you think? What'd you have in mind? Then you'd get score some coke. You've been locked up too long, man. You ain't no crack full son of a bitch. <laughs> hey, watch what you're doing, asshole. I'm sorry. How about some booze? Come on. Ain't no big deal. Ain't no law against it yet. I'm supposed to take your word for that. I gave soap to Becky. You sleep, buddy? Come on, you can tell me. I don't mind sharing with you. She's one hot bitch, ain't she? You got a picture. You slept with her. Now you're more than my mouth, Jack. You don't get one like that. Hey, fuckheads. Cut it, that fuck! Oh! I'm gonna kill the next fucking asshole who makes the fucking sound! Sometimes you gotta act crazy around these crazy motherfuckers. Come on, I'll, I'll walk you back to freedom. You the man, ain't you? Yeah, I'm the fucking king. Kill a lot of people. You want to hear about those? I'll pass for now. We'll talk about it later. Chicken shit butt fuckers. Ain't got any guts. All they're good at is raping five year olds and killing cripple old ladies. Their crimes show very little men. Ow! 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 Open the fucking door! I just want to tell you not to wait up because I gotta work late. I'll save you some dinner. Sarah? Yeah. You remember to lock the doors, okay? I love you too. What happened? 
Nothing. You just got me working too hard again. Now my wife's mad at you. Daryl Weston got stabbed. It's all in here. I was right there. Stuck there. This kid's got him all by the balls. You sound envious. The way he protected himself. I mean, he's a survivor, Will. Shit. What? I'm afraid he's gonna die. <sighs> Man's on death row, Jack. One way or the other. Come on, what, what is this? Hurry up. There's no rush. He's not going anywhere. Can I go? He's all yours. I'm never gonna die today. Son of a bitch stabbed me five times. Three times. How did you get it in? Plastic cat? I can probably in. Yeah. <laughs> Jack? Yeah. It was Brown. He put that fucker up to it. How are you so sure? He wants to do me like he did Fred. Some fucking reporter. I got more ears in here than you got on the outside. Brown did it, man. Cold blood. Shit. And they call me a killer. Man, I gotta get out of here before he gets to me. Still a little dry. You're listening to Atlanta Late Talk. We're back with Jack Travers. I understand that Weston was assaulted the other evening at the prison. Can you shed any light on that incident? Uh, I certainly can. I believe that the stabbing is connected to the death of Darrell Weston's partner, Fred Granger, which was a clear case of vigilantism. Granger was killed when he resisted arrest. Uh, well, Granger did not resist arrest. I, uh, according to a reliable source, he had been running scared for days and um, was glad when they got him. I believe that Agent Reginald Brown murdered Granger, and uh, two nights ago had Daryl attacked him. Have you told anybody else about this? I've talked to people at the uh, state level, and they uh, told me flat out to forget it. They said that getting a conviction of a uh, state investigator was about as likely as selling Ralph Nader a pinto. My father, you kidding me? Any cocksucker with an ace below his belt could be my father. Hell, Jack, for all the fuck we know, you could even be my father. Ain't that a kick? You been listening to the radio? Sarah's worried about you, you know? Oh, is that why you stopped by? What good neighbor you are? You're pissing a lot of people off, Jack. Guilty as charged. How about yourself? I don't give a good goddamn about your theories. You're hurting Sarah. Now you're drawing Mitchell into this. 
What has Mitchell got to do with this? Look, Jack, he's young. You know, he's got a lot to learn. Oh, yeah, sometimes you gotta break the rules, is that it? I'm a reporter, I don't choose sides. It's not good enough, you hear me? How good was it for Karen Allendale and her baby? How good was it for her? And how about her watching his children lowered into their graves? Reggie, I saw that too. I'm the one who made sure that everybody else saw that, just like you wanted me to. Just curious, Travers. What won't you do for a story? I won't break an inner and I won't kill. Some stories aren't meant to be told. Are you talking about Darrell Weston? Or are you talking about Fred Granger? <laughs> Listen, Jack, you're no crook, so you can't think like one. They can't care. You can and you do. So we, uh, just kind of watch yourself. You know what I'm saying? Be careful. How the wrong things do change around here. He's a cold-blooded killer. Watch what you say, Maggie can hear you. I hope to God she does. Reggie's as goddamn evil as doubt. What is the matter with you? You used to have friends in this town, Will and Reggie. You come back here, now you can't get along with anyone. Agent Brown, sweetheart. Okay. Where's your mom? In the ice do laundry. Can you please try? One shot. Come here. I got it. I got it. All right, now just aim. And hold on tight, because it might give you a little kick, okay? Just don't worry about me, okay? Whoa. Right where I was aiming. Travis residence. Yes, we'll accept the charges. Yeah. Who's this? Really? Maggie. Well, Margaret, really. Maggie, who is it? It's for Daddy. It's Daryl. Go get your father. Now. You got a nice kid, Jack. Yeah. She is a nice kid. Can you believe it? They're really going ahead with it. I didn't think they had the balls. Looks like we're gonna get our final chapter, eh, Jack? Hey, okay. I see. All right, guess you're in a hurry, huh? Missing a car commercial or something? Just thought you should know. Hey, okay. I see. <clears throat> Did you give him a set of keys, too? I didn't think he'd call here. He killed an entire family, Jack. What else don't you think he'll do? Daryl says he's not going to let them kill him. He's going to get out. And he wants me to be ready when that day comes. And then we'll get away in my mama's car. I don't have my own car yet. Daryl's going to buy me one when we get to Mexico. I want a sports car. 
You should come with us, Jack. You, me, and Daryl. What a team, huh? Yeah. Like this? Yeah, that's about it. Jack, it's got to be just right. That's it. That's how they sit. OK, you sit there. <laughs> Where's my camera? In the kitchen. We're in the kitchen. Right. We have to talk. Not now. Right now. We'll talk when I come back tonight, I promise. Oh, you've always been a real good talker, haven't you, Jack? Sometimes I think you can even convince yourself. Listen, today is a very big day. Daryl's getting his execution here, and it's, it's very, well, big. What is going on, Jack? I'm sorry. I damn it, Jack, you are not living in some rundown apartment by yourself anymore. I'm taking your car. Why did you come back here? Jurors will not impose a sentence that is either too heavy or too light. And here, when the district attorney told the jury that a life sentence meant the defendant would serve perhaps five to seven years, they found that too light and made it the death penalty. Are you quite done, counsel? I, for one, am sick and tired of this kind of dribble showing up in my court. Now, this is the third time you've made this argument, and I know you got a couple of shots left. But in my court, this will not be lost. Much time left for contemplation. No, man. Get in now. You for my execution. What? Are you out of your fucking mind? What the fuck are you telling him for? Shut the fuck up. He ain't gonna say nothing to nobody. Oh, you know, huh? You think because he writes about you, he's cool or something? Pretty fucking stupid. <laughs> ain't you heard of deep throat and some such shit, man? We're... And reporters, they don't divulge their, their sources. They fucking go to jail to protect their confidentiality. Ain't that right, Jack? You crazy. You crazy. <laughs> if you think you're getting out of here. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's really time to spread. I'm tired of all this shit. Say, so I need a favor from you. Get this to Becky, will you? Something bothering you? What are you gonna do when you get out of here? 
What, you, you afraid I'm gonna go around looking to kill me some more people? Don't worry, I'm past that shit. When I get out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise a family. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get married. Yeah, settle down. You've been a real example to me, Jack. <laughs> I trust you, Jack. I trust you. I trust you, man. You're a good son, Jack. Same time as last week. Afternoon, Mr. Travers. Hi. This. You gonna come visit us too? Huh? Or is Weston the only one good enough for you? No, you better. He don't work for hire. Come on! Come on! Come on! Enough! I think we've made our point. I got news for you, Travers. I never needed to hear from some damn court to know what needed to be done. I grew up with Herb Allendale. Knew Nate since he was a baby. And he was a beautiful child, Jack. And do you think I could really stand back after his family had been slaughtered? <laughs> Granger had to die. <clears throat> Just like your precious friend, Daryl. Do you think it's easy to kill a man? <clears throat> do you think it's easy to decide to kill a man? You gotta drum up a lot of hate for that. You're too damn nosy, Jack. That's my fucking job! Two weeks, Jack. I fry in two weeks. I'm not ready to go, man. I'm 19 fucking years old. Man, I gotta give it one more try. We got everything we need except for one thing. You gotta help me, Jack. I can't help you, Daryl. You want me to die? No, I can't help you. I know. Sorry I asked. I love you, man. You're all I got. You're my family. If I'd have met you a year ago, I'd, I wouldn't be where I am today, and... It, <laughs> fuck. Allendale's would still be alive. What went down there, Daryl? What went down there that day? I don't know, man. Something happened that afternoon. They were good people. Kind of memorized the Ten Commandments and tried to live by them. I could just smell their goodness. They were doing a lot of God mumbling. Told them God done abandoned their beef eating asses. Told them God wasn't in this little house. But the devil himself had arrived. But that wasn't it. It's not that I'm not evil. Or that any man is that evil.
I wanted something in there. Something I never had. A family of my own. Some such shit. Well, what's the hot story for today, sweetheart? You got to what? Cat up the tree there? Or are you what, a new boiler for the church? You're a jerk. Well, that's not news. Where you been? Hmm. <laughs> I can't find my key. Anybody see my key? Hey, Will! <laughs> I am I'm glad to see you. You know, I can't find my key. Best news I've heard all week. Never mind. I got it. I fucked up, Will. I really fucked up. I know. You broke the goddamn door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sir? Yeah, I'm Jack Travers. We met at the hospital. I'm sure you remember. Well, indeed I do. Yeah. Why did you come here? Oh, no, just see how you're doing. That man slaughtered my family. You're making a living off me. But 
children's blood pays your rent. I, hey, Mr. Allendale, let me explain something to you about this. You know, my interviews with Daryl Weston. You got uh, a daughter, ain't you? Yes, I do. My daughter-in-law was in a family way. My first grandchild, a girl. I wasn't supposed to know, because Karen wanted to be a surprise. But the doctor slipped up and told Nate. What's her name, your daughter? Maggie. How old? Eleven. It's a good age, eleven. She'd be working at the paper. Huh? Maggie, get in the house. Now. Nice crib, Jack. What do you want? Aren't you glad to see me? I thought you were always glad to see me. What are you doing? Daryl wants you to bring him this. sitting in my chair. Not anymore. You mean you're getting up? <laughs> I mean, it's not your chair anymore. What about the desk? Close the door. All right. But I don't think it's going to do any good. I remember fighting for page one in high school, Jack. It was fun back then, promising each other with get away from that damn tobacco field, never spend another day out there. But this thing you're into now, Jack, it ain't fun anymore. What is the big deal here? You're selling more papers than ever. This is the biggest story you'll ever see here, and I'm spoon feeding it to you. What do you expect me to do, Jack? If you haven't been in three times in the last two weeks, I'd have fired you two days ago if you bothered to show up. I'm out in the field. That's what you're paying me for. You're going to destroy yourself if you keep this up. The story's gonna kill you, Jack. Well, if it does kill me, it'll make great copy. I don't need this goddamn job. I got the AP deal. I'm gonna write a book about Wesson. It's gonna be the best goddamn book ever written. I'm Sarah. Then I must be Jack. I've seen you somewhere before. <laughs> Uh, on TV? Yeah. You're somebody, aren't you? No, I'm nobody, Sarah, and you can quote me on that. Come on, everybody's somebody. Oh, yeah? Hey, who are you? Huh? Just t tell me a story. I just tell Jack a story. Uh oh, this must be the boyfriend. <laughs> hold on, hold on. She's just about to tell me a story. I'm a reporter. I can make her famous. I know who you are. I knew I'd seen him before. He's that reporter that's been going on that death row. He was on TV. You know better than those fucking killers. Why don't you just get out of here? Oh, come on, Stan. He's famous. Leave us the fuck alone, man.
Not today, Henry. Please, now, I, I, please just keep your hands to yourself, you? I'm sorry about that, Jack, but rules is rules. Anyway, well, you're clean. I am. You taking that with you? Yeah. I'm teaching down on the two-step. You want to check it out? God, he does stink. Come on, get the hell out of here. Do a terrific job, Henry. Guilty. You found it? I found it. But you still brought it. Hey, Jack, I know I can count on you. Shit, man. I got those guys down cold. I could sneak a whore with a bell around her neck past them on a Sunday morning. You just did, man. You just did. Hocus pocus. Homemade uniforms, badges made of soap. I'm pretty good at carving soap, you know that. Patches, and now, thanks to you and a few guards with the right loyalties, we got this. Poor suckers are so underpaid, it's really a shame. Man, we're gonna walk right out of this joint. You son of a bitch. You fucking son of a bitch! You knew what you wanted! You want me out. You want that exclusive on the biggest, baddest escape in the history of mankind. Don't you, Jack? Don't you, Jack? Cool, Jack. I ain't gonna hurt you. We're brothers in the name. Forever locking them out. We're together now. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to the row. I'm glad for that. I really mean it. It's all over. It's too late for promises, Jack. You gotta get out of here. What are you doing? Where's Maggie? At Susie's. All right. Hello, this is Jack Travis calling, and I have got information regarding an escape. What? No, I am not drunk. God damn it. All right, listen, you got to go to Atlanta. You got to take Maggie, and we're going to stay there. You can come back later. I go, Jack. I am not coming back. It's just for a little while. Look, I cannot have Maggie around this kind of craziness anymore, and I won't stand for it either. Don't say that. Listen to me. When I married you, I knew it would be a strange, wonderful time, but not like this. You're crazy. You're ready to die. I am trying to do a job. No, Jack. That doesn't wash anymore. You choose to spend your time where you want, and I don't want to be cleaning up after you watching you come home like this anymore. God damn you, Jack. We are a family. But you've got no idea what that means, do you? Making me we're not some story you could rewrite when you don't like how it reads. Someday you're gonna wake up and you're gonna see what you did to us.
Should have called if you knew you were gonna be late. I didn't know I'd be cooking for two. You don't mind me being in here, do you? I mean, I don't take up too much room. I always do my dishes. Besides, looks like you could use the company. Game's over, Darrell. I'm through playing. You're right, man. As usual. We need money, Jack. Apply for a bank loan. I need your help. I write about you. I write about killers. And that's where I draw the line. I will not help you. If you don't help us, Jack, we're gonna kill you. Man, I wouldn't like that, but you done fucked up. And it's one hell of a mess. Call the BCI, tell them you planned the whole thing for us, just so you could get the fucking story. I'll bet they'll believe that. I know I can count on you. So this is the other side of Jack Travers, huh? Looks like you've done pretty well for yourself. I'm proud of you, Jack. Real home. Too bad I couldn't meet the wife and kid, though. Well, it took you fellas long enough that you put the guns down and he left hours ago. Everything okay here, Mr. Travers? Yeah, I'm still alive. That's good. We wouldn't want to book a corpse. You're under arrest, Mr. Travers. <laughs> Look for notes and letters from Weston. He could have called you a lot sooner. I think he enjoyed having you in jail for a while. Thanks. Thanks for getting me out. Don't. All right. Jack, I don't want to see you anymore. I did try to change you. Now you don't have to. Okay, man. Let's go to work. Okay, fellas, I'm at the phone booth. Nobody around. Right. What is it? Uh, Georgia just scored. How much time left? There's about three minutes. Yankee Stadium. You're alone, that's good. I do what I'm told. There's an orchard about three miles north, just off the road. That's the next stop. Don't fuck up. We've got a drop point, gentlemen. Let's go.
Come on, man. We gotta get out of here. Okay. Listen. If we're gonna go, we're gonna go together, right? Okay, Daryl. I'm ready. You and your friends got two minutes. If you walk out now, there will be no gunfire. Walk out now. Go ahead. I'm right behind you. Daryl? You're no killer, Jack. I just never pulled the trigger. He's coming back here, isn't he? Just between me and him. Well, at least you chose the right side. No, no sides. I just want to get this over with. Look, Travers, once you get your hands dirty, I'm not just talking about Weston. He's nothing. We'll get him. No, not you. That's right. <laughs> Right, now you. Looks like you got the end of your story. Somebody else is gonna have to write it. I'm through. Really hate to kill you, Jack. Never hated killing as much as I do right now. I told you. I love you, man. Looks like I gotta put this one out of his misery. Never thought you'd do that. Not in a million years. I had no choice. No choice? Between me and him? Fuck, man, I can't move anything. Last one. You all right? Yeah. Is it a long drive from here? Yes, yeah, long drive. I gotta start day after tomorrow. You all set? Yeah, I think so. We can send you anything you forgot. Okay.
Is it cold up in Chicago? Yeah, it's cold. Take care of your mom, okay? You're right, me. Hey, that's what I do best. You better. Can I come visit? You better. Good answer. Just beyond the shine. 